I better begin with my father was from Devon in England and he was the son of a merchant and who started the first general store in the west of England anyway. It may be in England to, you know, a Woolworths or any one of these. But uh, fire ruined the whole thing. But still, my father um, grew up in Devon and then he went to Oxford as a student and he studied medicine and um, <clears throat> when the war came, First World War, he volunteered with his motor bicycle, a Red Indian at the time, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> they discovered in, that he was qualified in medicine so they wouldn't want him as a dispatch rider as he wanted to be. So he was um, commissioned in the RAMC, and during the Gallipoli campaign, he was sent to Malta to look after the wounded coming back from the Gallipoli people. There he met my mother, who was um, the daughter of an influential family in Malta. And he fathered my elder brother in England and myself in Malta. And my two other brothers, younger brothers, he, they're all passed away. Um, I'm the only survivor. Um, what was I saying? Yes, my elder brother was born in England and I was born in Malta and the other two were born in, in, in India. Now, uh, when I went to India first time, I was only a toddler, I fell into the swimming pool and went straight to the bottom. Somebody rescued me. I think it was my mother. I count that as my first life. Well, in India, um, I grew up and I went to the um, local church school and my father was um, was appointed to the uh, medical college in Lucknow and that is where I spent my childhood, most of it, there and in Malta on furloughs every three or four years. And in the summers we used to go up into Kashmir in the monsoon season and I used to ride a horse and took place it took part in um, Jim Connors and that kind of thing. And then as it was at the time, all the Englishmen in uh, India, you know, used to send their kids back to England to be educated. And I was sent back after my elder brother Paul uh, to Paynton in Devon and we both went to school, a preparatory, preparatory school in Tinmouth, Tinmouth, which is near Exeter, between Torquay and Exeter. And um, we lived, us two brothers, whilst my family, the rest of the family were growing up in India and they came and left a brother and went back to India. And then when my last brother came around, my aunt, who'd been looking after me, and my elder brother got fed up, you see, looking after all her brothers. Although she did, in fact, spend a season in India, you know, because my father hoped to marry her off, but she didn't make it. And she went back and looked after us in the holidays because we boarded at, at 
at the uh, prep school. So, you know. And then, because she wouldn't take us anymore, uh, when my fourth brother came around, the fourth, I said, no, I, I, I can't do it. So my mother stayed and went to Oxford and I went to the Dragon School and my elder brother went to public school in the Midlands workshop and um, I went to the Dragon School, preparatory school, and followed by my brothers when they were there. And, but I had wanted to go into the Navy from a very young age, my father wouldn't um, wouldn't take that. He said, the Burridges have often been to sea and they've all died at sea. So I don't want you to go to sea. But I entered the Navy, special entry, on the day, more or less, that the First World War started. We were in the family was spending a uh, the summer in one of the um, oh, shore resorts in Britain, on the South Shore there, near Brighton. And that was when war was declared, but I had already made arrangements to take the special entry exam. And in November, I went to Plymouth, I was sent to Plymouth, and there I took the examinations for the Navy. And I got through and was gazetted as a uh, cadet on January the 1st, 1940, we were at war. And I went to Dartmouth as a special entry cadet. We special entry people were housed in a barrack at the bottom of the hill where the Royal Naval College stands. And that was enjoyable. We used to go into Torquay on the leaves on the weekends and met little girls and things and went to dances. And we, we had a good time. Then we were, when we'd finished our courses and we'd passed our examinations, we were sent to a ship, and I was gazetted to HMS Ramillies, which was um, in Alexandria at the time. So I went with others of my class into a um, <coughs> transport, and we went with a convoy down the Atlantic and round uh, Cape Horn and Durban, and um, <laughs> up through the east coast of Africa, through the Red Sea. That was interesting enough. And then we were dis uh, disembarked into a train to Alexandria, where we were sent to our ships. I went to Ramillies, which is an old, old battleship. And we had one action with the Italian fleet. And then Ramillies was considered, you know, it would sink of its own accord. It was an old ship. We went back to Britain and I joined the Royal Sovereign, which is the same class of battleship but much newer, and um, Ramillies went to the scrapyard. And Royal Sovereign is the ship I was in, and we went on Atlantic convoys, um, you know, guarding them, and at one point we went down to the United States to, uh, oh, what was his name now? Anyhow, one of the ports down there on the East Coast. And they couldn't, well, our uniforms in the tropics was in shorts, you know, 
and they couldn't stand people. You know, men had to, gentlemen had to cover their knees. So we couldn't, couldn't wear shorts. <coughs> but <coughs> families adopted younger people, you know. And this family took me to their uh, camp house in the woods, and that was fun. And um, when we left um, the United States, we went up to Norfolk. Oh, that was in the United States, Norfolk, Virginia. That's where we were, yeah. And then we went up to Halifax there, yeah, and that was our base, really. And from Halifax, we conducted these um, uh, escorting convoys to Britain, um, merchant ships. And, well, we had some sort of um, excitement in convoys, if we saw a U-boat or something that looked, might look like a periscope. And then, um, after I'd done my time, I was a gazetted as a midshipman, and we did, um, uh, no, I was a midshipman before that, when we went into the, from a cadet, into the, into the um, ships. And from midshipmen, we became sub-lieutenants, and we did courses in the south of England, Brighton and these places, where there were different colleges, as it were. You know, here we did um, navigation, and there we did something else. And then I volunteered for submarines, and we did a a course in submarining up in Blythe in the north of England. Then I was sent to uh, um, to join a submarine in Algiers, which at that time um, was in Allied hands. We, we, you know, this, the 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 war had turned around, and we could used the port of Algiers, because um, that's where the French government had gone. And there I joined the submarine Splendid. And we did a few patrols, and this last patrol, um, I was on the periscope and I saw a ship coming up over the horizon, and I called the captain and said, you know, there's a ship bearing so-and-so. And it was, in fact, a destroyer, British built. And we found out later, you know, it was sold to the Greeks before the war and captured by the Germans and now is being used by the German Navy. Well, we had to get away, but we didn't. They saw our periscope. I can see now, it's only now that I realize how they can see it by looking at these ships with the sun in a, bear, in a position. You can see the slight splash, you know, the wash of a periscope from miles away. And that's what they saw, and they came for us like a bullet, you know. So we went deep, but not deep, you know. They pushed over the um, depth charges, and one depth charge, ooh, the, the submarine just jumped, you know. And there were screams from astern, and the hatch had been sprung. And so we just had to surface. And on the surface, I, I was in charge of the gunnery and torpedoes. I had to go up to gunnery hatch. And I stood by the gun there. We couldn't use it, of course. 
um, we were abandoning ship. And I stood there, this is what amazes me because it's my second life, so to speak. I, there was a whiz. I was standing with my legs apart and something came down there. And then there was a bang behind me. It hit the gun low down. And I was, the back of this explosion pushed me in the, into the sea. And there I swam. And one of the, uh, the cook said, Sir, can you hold me up? I can't swim. So I held him up. And then the chief petty officer said, Sir, will you hold me too? So I had the two of them hanging on to me. And the Germans picked us up. But he, much to our surprise, you see, the petty officer let go of me as soon as he saw the ladder coming down to take us up. And he swam with a perfect crawl stroke, you know, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and nipped up the ladder, you know, and the German soldiers, uh, sailors rather, um, gave him a lot of booze. They saw him being carried by me, you see, and <laughs> he left me. Well, he was a wise old man, yes. Anyhow, I got to the uh, ladder with the cook who couldn't swim and got him holed up, and then I went up after him, and they helped me. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but I felt all sticky all over, and the shrapnel from the shell that hit behind me had busted up my ass, and um, you know, all the pellets were in my, there were pellets all over my back. So they sat me down and put a towel on me, which I still have. Oh, I don't know. I gave my towel to my son because I kept it all that time, you know, because there was a lot of bloody... It was very bloody. And, um, oh, I went on board the, uh, the destroyer. And then I called this my Italian holiday. You see, and I've written a short thing which is not published or anything about that because it was interesting for me. Uh, I was bungled into an ambulance and taken to a hospital. Now, curiously enough, years later, when I was in Naples, a man suddenly came up behind me and said, Hey! I drove you to the hospital. You know, I mean, heavens above. I said, did you? He said, yes. He said, you were the young officer in my ambulance, and I drove you to Nocera Inferiore, which was where the hospital was at the time. So, you know, that was an incident. But then um, I was in the hospital and they moved. When the uh, war really started in Libya and soldiers were going across the Med by now, you see, we, we were torpedoed, we were sunk in the Bay of Naples, you see. Um, we thought it would have been too long before um, I was sort of rescued or something, but no. They shoved us all up north to Milan, where they, the, the uh, surgeon there was very much more conscious, you know, he said, come, I'll have to operate on you. So he took these pellets out of my back and he showed them to me as I lay down on my stomach, you know, here you are, look, <laughs> <coughs> which was interesting. But he took them, he took a big one out of the, my thigh, my left thigh. And <clears throat> then from Milan, 
Well, in Milan, you know, there was a good hospital, it was a professional military hospital, and um, we used, when there was an air raid on, on, on Milan, we used to go down into the cellar. And this day, when the alarm went, my friend, uh, I had made friends with a guy, we went down to the cellar, and we all had our places, you know. And lo and behold, there were a couple of chaps, new fellows, who had taken our places. They were grinning at us, you know. And so I said, OK, you stay where you are. We'll go outside under the stairs. Well, lucky for us, because they hit us with... Um, they being the RAF, or Americans, with a bomb, and the whole ceiling came down. But it came down like that. And that is where we was, would be sitting. And all those guys got crushed to death. So we escaped. And these two new guys were dead, crushed. Well, when the aircraft had passed, we started to dig them out. And that's when we discovered that these, uh, you know, where we had been sitting, this was uh, another life gone, because, you know, there we were. And <coughs> then we went to a convent up in the north of Italy for a couple of weeks, and then I was sent we were separated by this time from my friend in uh, Milan and I was sent down to um, Modena to a prison camp, a regular prison camp where there were a lot of mixed uh, military people, sailors, no submariners, I was the only one that I knew of and um, I was, was um, appointed to a bed next to um, a South African engineer, rather older than me. Well, we heard all sorts of rumours in this prison camp about landings in the north of Italy and we should stay put and not do anything silly, it's like escape. 